we will discuss transradial approach for addressing the vertebral and basilar arteries lesions. As you all know that there is very little in the literature as far as this particular issue is concerned. Our own article on radial approach for the stenting of vertebro basilar artery stenosis has already been published in Keth Cardiovascular Intervention in 2010. There are some other workers who have done their work. I personally feel that it is very important to understand because this is one area which has not been explored by interventional radiologists as well as interventional cardiologists. Here we will show you a few examples of osteal vertebral, intracranial vertebral as well as basilar artery lesions and how we dealt with them using the transradial approach. This is an example of a tight left vertebral osteal stenosis which has been addressed using the left transradial approach. You can see that the lesion is profiled. A 6F JR4 catheter has been used and a 0.014 inch BMW PTCA guide wire is negotiated deep into the vertebral artery. Now a balloon expandable stand is placed across the lesion. Stand deployment in progress. This is satisfactory end result. This is a case of stenting of chronic intracranial left vertebral artery stenosis using left transradial approach. The lesion is profiled. Note that the ostium of left vertebral artery is cannulated using a 6F internal memory artery guide catheter. A 0.014 inch BMW PTCA guide wire is negotiated across the lesion and tip is parked distally in the basilar artery. A 2.5 millimeter PTCA catheter is negotiated through the curves of vertebral artery into the lesion. Ballooning is in progress now. This is the balloon result. Now a balloon expandable stent is negotiated across the lesion. Stenting is in progress now. This is a good end result. Here is an interesting case of stenting of acute basilar artery occlusion using left transradial approach. The left vertebral artery is cannulated using a 6F IMA guide catheter and the occlusion is profiled. A 0.014 inch BMW PTCA guide wire was negotiated through the occlusion which opened up partially. A 1.5 millimeter PTCA catheter was negotiated and kept across the lesion. Please note that we had to use a body wire to cross a 360 degree curve of the vertebral artery. Ballooning is in progress now. The distal flow is established and at this stage we shifted the patient to the ICU without deploying the stent. Next day the lesion was stented in usual fashion to avoid hyperperfusion brain injury. Stent was negotiated across the lesion. Stenting in progress. The final result is demonstrated. This is another view of the result. I must explain you why we used two stage approach in this case. There is an entity known as hyperperfusion injury which takes place in the intracranial artery, particularly when you open up the acute occlusion all of a sudden. The blood will gush to the distal part and that leads to severe hyperperfusion related injury and intracranial bleeding. So we have devised this approach. What we do in acute basilar or vertebral artery stenosis is we just 
give a little bit of opening to the total occlusion so that the distal brain tissue gradually gets adopted to the blood supply. And next day we go ahead and stand the same area and this is how they are able to tolerate it better and we avoid hyperperfusion injury. Although there is no data available on this, this particular technique works out very well for us and it has some definite logic for the explanation. Now I will show you the case of stenting of chronic basilar artery stenosis using right transradial approach. The right vertebral artery is cannulated using a 6FJR4 guide catheter and lesion is profiled. A 0.014 inch BMW PTCA guide wire is negotiated across the lesion. Ballooning is done using a 2.5 millimeter PTCA catheter. This is the balloon result. Now a balloon expandable stent is negotiated and kept across the lesion. Stenting in progress. This is satisfactory end result. Another view demonstrating the result. Note that we have not used two stage approach in this case because the lesion was chronic and the brain tissue distal to the lesion is usually quite well adapted to the less blood supply. So in chronic occlusions you may straight away use balloon dilatation followed by stenting in one stage. 